Hey guys, welcome to the Wicked Kitchen. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make the hot box cabbage that I've been showing off on Instagram and also some amazing pulled sticky mushrooms. You're gonna love this. So let's get started. We need a couple of these cone cabbages, which they sell everywhere here in the UK. And we also have some king oyster mushrooms that I got. So we're gonna start with the hot box cabbage first because it takes the longest. So, and if I didn't tell you already, you kind of need a Dutch oven, something that's oven safe, deep, and has a lid on it. So that is what I'm calling hot box cabbage and you'll see that right now. So I take the cabbages, both cabbages, and I just put them in here a little bit. What I do is oil my hand. So just a little bit of oil on the, on the hand. Rub that here and then just rub the exterior of the cabbage. It's the, this extra loose leaf, I just go underneath it a little bit. All right, both, set, both of them. So you don't actually have to use oil if you don't want to. I'm using it for the sole purpose of it being able to hold the spices and seasonings onto the cabbage. So without that moisture or that oil, it won't stick. So I'm just adding, so I'm using a little bit of the hot and barbecue spice wicked blend. So it's just a barbecue blend really super flavorful and we're just going to season all around it and do it in a bowl so we can add them we won't lose anything of it try to get all the sides okay it's good like that and then i'm just adding it right to this so this is just a cold dutch oven at the moment we're gonna add this part here. So just make it fit nicely. Sweet. So then the extra spices I have, I'm just gonna come out and then I'm just gonna on top here. Have this, putting a cover on. You can use any Dutch oven that works in the oven. So I've preheated the oven to 200 degrees Celsius, it seems to be the norm for me. Um, I like the high hot heat. So 200 degrees, Celsius, 200 degrees Celsius on fan or 400 degrees convection back home. Yes, perfect. So we're gonna pop that in the oven and that's probably gonna take a good 45 minutes, 45, 60 minutes. So while that's cooking, we're gonna pull some mushrooms. All right guys, so for the mushrooms, we're gonna be using the king oyster mushrooms right here. The pulling technique, I've showed it before. There's a couple of videos here we have if you want to check those out. And this one, it's the same technique. Just drag your fork along. So depending on the size of the shreds you want, you can do really fine where you're just pulling all the way through the mushroom, right? And it stays. And then you can rip them apart so that's really fine if you want more of that consistency, or if you want a thicker one, I'll show you. So if you want a thicker consistency more, so I, I equate the thinner ones more towards like a pulled shredded pork or a beef, and then the chicken um, or turkey, I just do on the outer edge, right? Like this, I'm not going too deep, and then I'll, Tear the cap off, break that piece up, add it to the bowl. But then the other bits, I just take and I rip so they're bigger. And then that'll give you a different mouthfeel as far as the texture of a bigger piece. It visually will look like a like bigger shreds of, of meat. And so that's clearly different. So you can see how that is. And I think that's how we're going to do this one. So just sometimes here, rip it apart, crush it, pull it in. To the different sizes really adds to the visual and the end product. So just like that. It already looks like shredded chicken or turkey meat to me. So you just repeat the process until you get all the mushrooms done. It's really one of the best fucking techniques ever. Yeah. 
All right, so once you finish shredding all the mushrooms, you'll see they're all done like this. They were a good amount. So I'm heating up a cast iron pan. It's on medium high heat. I want to get that ripping hot. Best way to test when the pan is hot is to hear that sizzle when you flick a little bit of water on there. So it's looking good. I'm going to add a little bit of the oil now. So remember, there is no fat whatsoever in the mushrooms. So by adding this, it's going to add texture, mouthfeel, and it's also going to help cook and crisp up the ends. And that's what we're looking for. So I'm just going to add all the mushrooms right to it. And I'm going to cook these down just like this. There's several ways to prepare the shreds. Whatever way works for you, whether you're roasting them, whether you're pan roasting them like this, or if you just want to toss them in oil and seasoning and then roast them like that, there's, you can do it. There's no wrong way to do it. It's just the application. So we're going to roast these down. They're going to wilt. We're going to brown them off. We're going to throw them back in the oven and then we're going to finish them back on the stove again in a minute. About midway through, I'll add a little bit of salt and then a little bit of pepper. So this bit takes a little bit longer, whereas we're cooking the mushrooms down. You don't need to turn them over yet. A lot of the liquid is coming out of them. The frying noises have kind of calmed down and they're starting to look good and cooked. So probably it roughly takes 10, 15 minutes to do it this way. All right guys, so the mushrooms are looking great. Starting to stick to the pan a little bit. I'm starting to get the little crispy edges, which is what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna add a little bit of seasoning here and then we're gonna pop them in the oven. So we're gonna add just a couple pinches of the sesame togarashi. And I'm also gonna use a little bit of the sage, onion and garlic mix. So that will give, to me, more of a reminiscent of um, animal products that I used to eat. So just to have that flavor. So just a little bit here of that. And that's a good blend right there, these two. And immediately it, starts, it smells amazing. So I'm just gonna make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom. And I'll pop this right in the oven, just like this. Turn off the heat. So whole pan in the oven. So remember that oven is on 200 degrees Celsius uh, fan convection, 400 degrees in the US. All right, so we're gonna check the situation in this oven. It's been a few minutes. So it's been 10 minutes and we're gonna pull this. This is good, but I am gonna cook it a little bit more on here. And while that, this is beautiful. It's nice and crispy bits, really taken out. So I get a lot of comments about people asking like, oh, how do you make mushrooms not chewy or slimy or this or that? Look, it's not the mushroom, it's the way you cook it. So this right here is alleviating that. Nice and crispy. The texture is amazing. Um, that's all I can say about that. Let's pull out the cabbage. So it's been about 45 minutes. And now be careful, this is hot. So I'm just gonna remove this. Beautiful. So I wanna roast this up. This is super hot here. I'm gonna add this back into the oven. I wanna just give it a quick turn. So move it around. Ah, uh, awesome. You guys, this is great. So the cabbage is fully cooked, fully intact. Just kinda, I want it a little bit drier. So we're gonna pop it in the oven while we finish up the mushrooms here open. So guys, just look at this. I just wanna give you a good shot of that. This is amazing as it is. Can eat it just like this. Um, some crispy bits, some chewy bits, all the different textures. 
the flavor and the smells from the sesame togarachi and a little bit of the sage garlic and onion mix in there. This is great with just gravy for a holiday roast. You can add barbecue sauce, hoisin sauce, teriyaki sauce. We're gonna do the teriyaki right now. So it's a cross between the hoisin and the teriyaki. So I have a, a jar of the Wicked Sticky Teriyaki. It's still so new, we don't have the label on it yet. It'll be on shelves by the time this is airing. We're just gonna add probably a good half of this. So I hope you guys are having a good day. I'm having a good day. Any day I'm cooking is a good day. Stir that sauce in. See, that looks gorgeous. So we're gonna put it right to the side here. This looks amazing. Just gonna spread it out a little bit here. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna have that hot box cabbage with this. And then also, I have this amazing veg board, as you see here, that we have as, as well ready. And you can see how we made all of this right here on this link, so you could have this whole meal. That looks gorgeous. Check that out. I think cabbage is probably one of the most underrated veggies. I, I think almost every vegetable is a little bit underrated, so we like to elevate them a little bit here. that. And get the other one. That looks amazing. I'm gonna make steaks out of them so I'm gonna cut them about an inch. Right underneath. So the exterior, yes, you saw how much spice we put them on, on in the beginning and you might have been thinking, oh that's a lot. It's not when you look at it like this because the interior, there's no spice on it at all. So what I'm gonna do is use more of the sauce since I have a lot of the sauce here. This is the Chinese inspired barbecue sauce. It's, it's um, inspired by a char siu. So it's a very sticky, sweet, there's some beetroot juice in there. It's amazing. I'm gonna pour a little bit on here. And this is gonna give it that nice, sweet and sour, sticky cabbage steaks. I'm gonna brush this on. Looks amazing, smells amazing. Okay, so this right here, if you it's it goes along with the whole veg board theme. So you just pop this in the oven 15, 10 to 15 minutes before you wanna serve it, and it should be all ready to go. Making it easy AF to cook. We're gonna pop this in the oven for about 10 minutes and then we're done. All right, so it's been in the oven about 10 minutes. We'll pull that out now. Oh yes. Oh, that looks gorgeous. All right guys, look at that bubbling. That looks amazing. It smells super good. Chew, that looks great like that. And then, I mean, these mushrooms look delightful, don't they? Look at that meaty. Also have this amazing veg board that we did and you guys can see that video right here and check out how we made all these things. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the broccoli. I'm gonna put that right here. So this is a mango masala flavored broccoli. And that right there. Looks like a delicious meal to me. So we'll finish it off with some fresh coriander. Just to make it look gorgeous. All right guys, there you have it. We have the hot box cabbage, which is showing that amazing technique. Just use different seasonings if you want, different flavors. And we have the pulled mushrooms and that amazing broccoli. See you soon. <laughs> I don't remember that part. I don't want to say it too much. Right now, yes. <laughs> <laughs>